Okay, we'll start you off with the key for the transformations practice. Uh, first one, two units to the right and three units down. Well, two units to the right is you replace x with x minus two, and the three units down is subtract three from function. So if you start with the absolute value of x, then replace x with x minus 2, and then subtract 3 from that, you will have the answer to the first one. So right here in yellow, right there in yellow you have the answer to the first one. Now if we start with the absolute value of x, and we reflect it across the x-axis, that says take what you have and multiply it by negative 1, you'll end here. So notice I'm not looking for you to stack all these things up and do it in order. Just always go back to the original, which is the absolute value of x. I'll reflect across the y-axis. says, well, take what you start with. Replace x with negative x. Next one is reflect across the x-axis and shift right 6 units. So I'll start with absolute value of x. I'll reflect it across the x-axis. And then write 6 units. It says, hey, look at what you have and replace x with x minus 6. There you go. Uh, you're starting with the function f of x equals x cubed. Write the equation for the transformation and describe the transformation in words. So I'll go back to my original function, and I'm just going to add 2 to it. So the original function is x cubed. I'm going to add 2, and I know that's a shift up 2 units. Uh, the next one says go to your original function and replace x with x minus 4. So it was x cubed. Now it's now it is x minus 4 cubed. And if x became x minus 4, there's a shift right 4 units. Uh, next one says go to your function, which is x cubed. Replace x with negative x, so negative x cubed. And then don't forget to subtract 3 from it. So if x was replaced with negative x, that would be a reflection across the y-axis. And then the minus 3 was down 3. And those are two transformations. You could, you could rearrange that order, and you're not going to change the result. Oh, next said multiply your function by negative 1. So negative 1 times x cubed, and then subtract 8. So negative 1 times my function reflects it over the x-axis. And then the minus 8 moves it down 8. The order on that one is important. Okay, So it was a reflection over the x-axis, then down 8. And how you know is that minus sign on the outside, sitting right here, it's only attached to the f of x. If I had these parentheses, then it would show that it was first shifted down 8 and then reflected. Uh, number 3, describe in words what transformations are required. Well, it looks like it's flipped over the x-axis, so reflection over the x-axis. And then it was shifted to the left for... So, if you start with x squared, and you reflect it over the x-axis, that goes negative 1 times x squared. And then left 4 says take that x and replace it with x plus 4. So you'd wind up with negative 1 times x plus 4 squared. Okay, next. The original function is shown. Um, so I've got some points. I've got like 0, 0, 4, 2, 
Let's see if I have 9, 3. Yep, I do. Notice in each case, if you take the square root of x, you get the y. So the original function is square root of x, right? y. y is f of x. So f of x is the square root of x. It looks like... I mean, uh, let's say the first step I have is to reflect it. Now I'm going to make that choice. So I'm going to say, hey, my first step is reflect it over the x-axis. Oops. So if that's after I reflect it over the x-axis, the equation would go from, let's see, square root x. The next step would be uh, negative 1 times square root x. Now we can see it doesn't match yet. It needs to now be moved to the right four units. If you look at the curve here in yellow, it needs to be slid right and down. Okay, so how far right's it got to go? It's got to go to the right this far. So four units. Oops. I lied. It's got to go three units to the right and then five down. So if we go 3 to the right, that's going to be replace x with x minus 3. So I'll go negative 1 times square root x minus 3. And if I want to move that down 5, I will just put in a tech of minus 5 onto the end. So that is g of x. So what you're going to see highlighted in green here Okay, there's your g of x, and there's the graph of g of x. I can see the basic shape of the graph didn't change. You know, I mean, if you go over one, down one, you get a point. If you go over three, let's see, it went over four, down two, one, two, three, four, down two, and that was all. The square root of four is is two. But it's just good to check to make sure that this thing wasn't also vertically stretched. So, all I had to do was write the equation. So we're done. We've got g of x. Same with number 5. I'm going to, let's see, this looks like it is 2 to the x. And I can check with some points. Let's see, 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 2nd is 4. And right here, this is the point 3, 8 and 2 to the third is 8. So I have the correct parent function. Now I've got to shift the graph. First thing I'm going to do is reflect it 2 to the x. I'm going to reflect it over the y-axis. So I'll show you what that sketch looks like. So this point here stays the same. That stays the same. And see this point gets moved over. Got a couple points now. Let's move another one. This point here is going to get moved over here. Right, so we'll start to get an idea of what the sketch looks like. Um, if you think about this as almost like a line segment, okay, let's say it starts kind of at negative 3. If you move that whole segment, if you reflect it over there, Then you're going to end up with this thing here. So once it's been reflected, its basic shape is, is this. OK, so I'm drawing you in black there a picture of 2 to the x after it's been reflected over the y-axis. And if we want to reflect over the y-axis, we're going to replace x with negative x. So obviously, I still don't have it. Um, what I notice, though, is this point right here in, in yellow. I think that's this one right here. Okay, And I can, I can do some things to check. Okay, I can say, well, if I go over 1, 2, then it goes over up 1, 2, 3. Let's check. One, two, one, two, three. Yep, 
and it kind of looks if you backed if you said if I went down one I go back one two down one back one two I don't think this thing has been stretched at all so I just I went through that work there with you just so we could verify that when we compare the two graphs these two points in green um, were really the same point. So I, I know okay, that the goal has to be to move this point over some distance and then up. So it looks like it goes back six and up four. So I've got to slide this graph in yellow. Okay, if I slide it left six units and up four, I should get the graph in green. So left six and up four. So we can do the left six first. So left six says replace x with x plus six. So two to the minus, now I'm gonna substitute for x x plus 6, so there's my left 6, and then I'm going to go up 4, up 4, it says take what you have and add 4, 2 to the negative x plus 6 plus 4, and that's your g of x. So right here is our answer. I'm going back to the prompt, make sure I answered it completely. Write an equation for the function. Okay, so I got it. That's my new function. My new function right there. Cool. Uh, next one. Graph the absolute value of x, and then graph g of x, which is a transformation of it, and then talk about the transformations that are required to change it. So absolute value of x looks like this one. So I'll do a quick sketch of that. I don't have a very steady hand there. You know, before I sketch the other one, it, it, for me it's going to be easier to sketch if I know how to transform this one. So I'm right away going to go to g of x. And I'm going to start with absolute value of x. And I'm going to try to build this thing right here. So start with absolute value of x and try to build g of x. And pay attention to the order. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is replace x with x plus 4. And that's right 4. Okay, then I'm going to multiply what I have by negative 1 because I want this negative to show up. And notice how that negative doesn't apply to this minus 2. Okay, so I want to get the negative there and then minus 2. If I subtracted 2 now and then multiplied my function by negative 1, well, then it would be like I had parentheses here. And I, I don't have that. So we're going to, let's see, multiply our function by negative 1, which is a reflection over the x-axis. So negative 1 times absolute value of x plus 4. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract 2, so down 2 which says take what you have and subtract 2. Okay, so the goal was to describe in words the transformations that are required to change f of x into g of x. I had to start with f of x, build g of x, and keep track of all the steps so that when I'm done, I say, hey, I've got a list of the transformations and the order that they have occurred in in order to build g of x. So now I just go to the graph real quick. So let's say transformations. I mean, your teacher wants to. You want to be clear to your teacher. These are the transformations in this order: one, two, three. So now let's apply them. So right four, one, two, three, four, gives me this graph. Okay. Then we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So that would give me this graph
and then down two. I'll do the final graph in like a, a wider pen. We'll put it in black. Down two would be this one. Okay, so I'll highlight the final answer in yellow of the graph. So that is g of x. And then we have the transformations that occurred and the order in which they occurred to produce uh, g of x. So good job. Thanks for watching.